Ja, ja. 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 Ja,
Ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, Ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ja, ich freue mich, dass ich. Ah, okay. Ja, das ist die erste Runde. Ja, 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 ja. Das war damals der Herrscher. Das war Jahre, das war Lehrer. Ja, ja, ja. Das ist auch so. Und wir haben zehn Jahre Also, ich war in Bühler, das war eine extrem große Stadt. Ja, das kann man sagen, das ist der Aber gefällt sehr gut. Hallo, hallo, hallo. Und sind Sie ein bisschen nervös? Also, ich 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 reflexe die Torten so für dich. Ich habe das nicht gesagt, dass ich das nicht gesagt habe. Ich habe das nicht gesagt, dass ja, kann man sagen. 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 Ja, kann
then the pizza. What is really like it? Right. Yeah, is a um, can tell a lot of my fire. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, PHP, defense of Mr. Al Khalifa. My name is Oliver Nickerman. I'm the head of the PHP commission. Uh, also, uh, welcome to our first referee, Professor Poyer, our second referee, Professor Anne Wachen from Magdeburg. Thanks for traveling here. And the procedure is, uh, most of you know, we first have a presentation by Mr. Khalifa. And uh, then the majority of you have to leave the room. Then we have the ability to grill Mr. Khalifa for some time to some uh, questions. And afterwards, you're going to hear good or bad news. So, uh, Mr. Khalifa, to stage, please come. Thank you so much, Professor Nigeland, for the kind of introduction. And I would like to start by thanking my supervisor, Professor Boyer, for his guidance and support throughout this journey. I would like also to thank Professor Van Bachem for accepting the role of the second examiner and for being here with us today. And last but not least, I would like to thank you all for attending this presentation, either here or online from back to So, the topic of my PhD thesis is the modeling and simulation of uh, breakup of agglomerates and turbulent flows. The presentation is um, organized in seven sections, and I would like to start with the motivation and objectives. So, particle and flows are defined as fluid flows containing small immiscible solid particles. Such flows are encountered in a variety of um, environmental and industrial applications. Examples are sandstorms, smoking fumes produced by industrial processes, and medical dry powder inhalers. In many of these examples, understanding the evolution of the particle size, either by agglomeration or deagglomeration, is an important issue since, for example, the way our bodies interact with inhaled uh, aerosols, either pollutants or medical formulations depends really on the particle size. For this reason, um, continuous efforts are made to develop particle and flow simulation methodologies which are reliable and efficient and able to predict the evolution and predict, uh, development of the particle size. Different methods exist in the literature for simulating particle and agglomerate laden flows, which compete in resolution and efficiency. In the most accurate method, the flow around each particle and the interparticle interactions are fully resolved in time and space, which renders such methods computationally very expensive and restricted to fundamental investigation. At the opposite end stand coarse grained methods, in which particles are modeled as a second continuum. Between the two extremes, different options are available, and my work focuses on the approach in which agglomerates are treated as uh, single Lagrangian entities possessing effective densities and diameters. Um, the challenge here is that since the detailed structure of agglomerates is neglected, a direct and straightforward prediction of the separation of the constituting primary particle is not possible, and therefore rules need to be introduced in order to describe the deagglomeration process. So, the objectives of my work are first to develop and improve description of the structural features of agglomerates. Second, uh, to develop a model for the breakup by fluid induced stresses. And third, to predict or to develop a model for the breakage due to all impacts. And lastly, these models need to be incorporated in an existing large really simulation based oil Lagrange simulation tool. And that brings me to explain our computational methodology. So, the continuous phase is predicted in the Eulian frame of reference based on the large simulation technique. The code applied a finite volume method for curvilinear block structured grids. The solver is second order accurate in time and space. And various subgrid scale models are available, including Smagronisky and the dynamic model by German. The particle phase or the SPS phase is predicted in the Lagrangian frame of reference. The point particle approach is applied to approximate the fluid particle interactions. Various external forces are considered including drag, gravity, buoyancy, lift, pressure gradient, and added mass. 
the effect of the unresolved so motions on particles is accounted for by a Langevin type particle subject scale model. And the collisions are um, deterministically um, detected and um, handled based on, uh, based on an extended hard sphere treatment, which accounts for agglomeration. So now I would like to move to the first modeling package, which is concerned with the description of agglomerates in our methodology. So to determine the motion of an agglomerate, the density and the diameter describing, or the density and the diameter of a fictive sphere representing the agglomerate need to be described. Um, assuming equally sized primary particles, the density and the diameter depend on a structural feature donating the backing fraction. In addition, for evaluating the strength of the agglomerates, which are assumed to be cohesive and dry, a second structural feature needs to be uh, specified as uh, suggested or required by the tensile strength model by Rumpf, which is used in the present work, which is the coordination number. The coordination number here, KC, is defined as the average number of interparticle contacts per primary particle within the agglomerate. So, in order to devise a model for the packing fraction and the coordination number, a large vertical packing consisting of 200,000 primary particles is generated by a Monte Carlo simulation. Then, a continuous series of agglomerates are extracted from this, uh, ranging between two primary particles to 1,000 primary particles, are extracted from this large packing. Next, the structures of these agglomerates are analyzed concerning the packing fraction and the coordination number, and then the obtained results are rescaled using formulas and models available in the literature to account for the material properties and other physical effects. The, lastly, the rescaled values or the scaled values are listed in lookup tables as functions of the number of primary particles in the agglomerate to be used in the Euler-Lagrange simulations. Next, is the model for the fluid-induced breakup. So in order to fully describe a breakup event in our wild underground simulations, three issues need to be addressed. The first one is the condition of breakup. The second one is the number and the size and the sizes of the resulting fragments. And the third one is the post-breakup velocity of these resulting fragments. The proposed model is theory-based and suggests to compute the fluid stresses exerted in the agglomerates while moving along their Lagrangian trajectories uh, three stress mechanisms are um, taken into account, the turbulent stresses, drag stress, and the rotor stress. Breakup is assumed to take place whenever the maximum of these three um, components or contributions exceed the strength of the agglomerate, and upon detecting a breakup, agglomerates are replaced by fragments of defined sizes and velocities. So now I would like to give some um, small uh, details, some details about each of these three stress mechanisms, starting with the turbulent stress. So the velocity fluctuations in the ambient turbulence induce pressure differences and velocity gradients over the size of the agglomerate, which leads to deformation and breakup. In the literature, it's frequently argued that small agglomerates with sizes comparable to the viscous separate of turbulence experience shear stresses, whereas larger agglomerates experience normal stresses or yeah, um, encounter normal stresses. In any case, in both cases, the magnitude of the stress depends on the root mean square uh, velocity fluctuations over the size of the agglomerate. And assuming an isotropically, uh, isotropic and homogeneous, locally isotropic and homogeneous turbulence, the uh, root mean square velocity fluctuations can be uh, expressed as a function of the local dissipation rate of the turbulent kinetic energy, the kinematic viscosity, and the agglomerate diameter. Uh, when breakup by this mechanism takes place, agglomerates are assumed to split into two identical fragments. And following an experimental, experimental observation by Zaha in 2013, agglomerates breaking by this mechanism split in opposite directions of the most extensional eigenvector of the strain rate tensor. Lastly, the separation velocity is uh, computed based on an energy balance in which, uh, uh, sorry, an energy balance for the turbulent fluctuations over the size of the agglomerate are combined by a local conservation of momentum. In this case, the second uh, mechanism is the drag stress which refers to the tensile stress um, in, uh, experienced by agglomerates accelerating or decelerating in a fluid flow. Um, um, the typical or uh, classical model by Bagasta and Tommy uh, is uh, extended in, this, uh, in the present work towards detecting or uh, predicting the number of erodible uh, part, uh, the number of erodible particles. This is achieved by examining the stress acting on spherical caps 
of different sizes within the agglomerate. The largest, the largest spherical cap at which base the stress is larger than the, stress of the strength of the agglomerate is assumed to be the breakable portion. And applying a mass balance, one can determine the number of particles represented by this spherical cap within the agglomerate. The um, predicted number of erodible particles uh, is assumed to detach as a single fragment in the direction of the drag force. And the magnitude of the separation velocity is computed based on an energy balance in which we assume that part of the kinetic energy of the agglomerate is consumed during the breakup process and the remaining part is used to increase the relative velocity between the fragments. The third mechanism is the rotary stress, which is attributed to the centrifugal source, uh, forces arising within agglomerates rotating along their own axis. The details are, are available in the thesis, however, I will not be able to discuss this in details due to the limited time of this presentation. Lastly, to keep the breakup independent from the time, small time step size um, typically required for wall resolved large simulations, a breakup time lag is introduced, which prevents an agglomerate from breaking more than once within a certain time interval. Um, the idea here is motivated by experimental and numerical results, uh, which um, or observations which confirm that the disintegration process of agglomerates occurs over a certain time scale. Um, the magnitude of the uh, breakup uh, time lag is computed, or two relation, two models or relations are proposed for calculating the magnitude of the time lag depending on the responsible, let's say, breakup mechanism. Next is the model for the wall impact breakage. Again, in order to fully describe a wall impact breakage in our CFD simulations, uh, three issues need to be described or addressed. The first one is the onset of a breakage for a certain set of impact conditions and material properties. The second issue is the uh, number and the size distribution of the arising fragments. And the third issue is the post breakage velocity of fragments. Um, and in order to develop a model, a data-driven approach is followed, in which we, which I carried out tens of thousands of DEM simulations um, of a single agglomerate impacting a wall with a different uh, conditions, including the impact velocity and impact angle, and the number and size of the primary particles. And uh, the main goal, or the ultimate goal, is to uh, try to uh, approximate the relationship between the um, outcomes of a breakage and the studied impact conditions, which has been achieved first based on traditional regression te techniques and later, later using artificial neural networks. So focusing on the model for the number and the size of the rising fragments, the performed DEM simulations covers nine impact angles ranging from a small uh, 0.2 uh, shear impact case of 0.2 degrees to a normal impact case of 90 degrees, eight agglomerate sizes ranging between 5 and 1,000 primary particles, three primary particle sizes ranging between 1 and 5 micrometer, these are called powers A, B, C, and the velocity is varied over a range for each case, of course, the velocity is varied over a range to achieve different impact um, scenarios. Besides all of that, the location of the impact point at the outer surface of agglomerate was varied up to eight times in order to improve the statistics. Um, the number of arising or the number of resulting fragments is described based on the fragmentation ratio and the uh, uh, size of the three first, la or the three first largest fragments are expressed in terms of a fragment size parameter, C. And in order to establish a relationship between these breakage parameters and the impact conditions, a new dimensionless number was introduced which summarizes all the relevant impact parameters in a single variable. And when plotting the fragmentation ratio and the fragment size parameter of the largest fragment here as an example, as functions of the new dimensionless number, the data obtained for different impact cases nearly collapses into a single smooth curve. And based on this observation, a regression by a two-parameter function was applied to approximate this relationship between these breakage parameters and the dimensionless number P impact. This regression function, or the regression function, because we have also for different uh, zetas here, are here depicted as red curves. However, these results are early results, so to say. Later, additional DEM simulations were carried out to cover the shear impact case, and when the results of these cases are added to the analysis, here the gray points refer to the shear impact case of 0.2 degrees. Larger deviations are detected, and um, it, was, it was realized that the two-parameter regression function based on the dimensions number P impact is not well suited for shear impact cases. And that motivated the introduction of a neural network. So a uh, fully connected feedforward neural network with two hidden layers is trained to predict the fragmentation ratio and the fragment size parameters. 
the training is done in MATLAB, uh, applying the Lindenberg Marquardt algorithm with a Bayesian regularization. The achieved coefficients of determinations are squared in both the training and the testing deficit are higher than 0 0.997. Now, the post package velocities of the fragments are uh, collectively described based on viable probability density functions of the reflection angle alpha, spreading angle beta, and the velocity ratio of the fragment to, with respect to the impact velocity of the agglomerate. Due to the statistical nature of this analysis, each uh, or many fragments need to be analyzed for each set of impact cases. For this reason, this analysis here focuses on solely three agglomerate sizes and a single primary particle size, while increasing the number of repeated impact cases in order to improve the data for the same set of uh, impact conditions. Here are examples for the histograms obtained for the velocity ratio and the uh, uh, two characteristic angles, alpha and beta, for one of the cases considered, and the superimposed curves are the viable probability density functions. Now the idea becomes to find a relationship between the parameters of the viable distribution, k and lambda, and our impact conditions. This has been done in a first approach, assuming that lambda and k, the parameters of the viable distributions, are functions solely of the most relevant feature, which is the impact angle, and um, uh, subsequently a regression by fourth order polynomials is applied to approximate this, fu this functional relationship. Here you can see an example for lambda and k. These are the parameters describing the viable distribution of the reflection angle alpha for all cases. And the red curves are the fourth order polynomial fittings. Um, of course, uh, this is again uh, early results when we added some uh, results for the data for the shear impact cases here. We detected larger deviations in this region, which uh, encouraged again the use of neural networks. So a second neural network where the head, single hidden layer is trained to predict lambda and k of the viable distributions. Um, the coefficients of determinations uh, achieved in the training and the testing that set were around 0 0.92. Now, I would like to move to the test cases and results. Three test cases are carried out. The first one is the de agglomerator test, uh, de de agglomerator test case. The setup of this large scale de agglomerator is, is inspired by the uh, experimental work by Vidal in 2008. It consists of a horizontal duct intercrossed by a funnel. Uh, agglomerates are released at the top of the funnel, and air is forced into the system through this main inlet. The fluid flow rate is varied twice, uh, leading to two different Reynolds number of 8,700 and 34,800. The simulations are well resolved. The dynamics and base model by Germano is applied, and at the main inlet, inflow data are applied, which is obtained from additional simulation of a straight duct with periodic boundary conditions. Now, each release agglomerate is assumed or represents uh, 100 primary particles in order to um, uh, in order to investigate the effect of cohesion on the agglomeration. Three silica powders, distinguished solely by the size of the primary particle size, are um, taken into account here, called ABC. Of course, are taken into account separately, so each simulation um, take only one powder, one of these three powders. However, for all powders, the mass flow rate of particles is fixed at 10 mg per second to match the experimental condition by Weiler in 2008. And here it's worth mentioning that solely the breakup by fluid induced stresses is taken into account in this uh, test case since, or to, in order to focus on this phenomenon, exactly. So we start by looking at the results of the fluid flow, and a, stream, uh, a snapshot of the uh, instantaneous streamwise velocities shows that, as expected, the tip of the funnel in the duct uh, leads to a flow separation and give rise to a strong shear layer. So agglomerates falling down in the funnel are appropriately accelerated as soon as they enter the main duct, and they encounter strong turbulent stresses and fluid torques as can be deduced from the average magnitude of the stream rate tensor and the average magnitude of the vorticity vector, respectively. Indeed, the breakup positions for powder A at the high limit number case shows that agglomerates start to break uh, by the drag stress as soon as they enter, or even shortly before they enter the main duct. Here, the coloring is based on the number of particles in the agglomerate, whereas the breakup by the rotor stress takes place almost everywhere along the Lagrangian trajectories around, uh, of the agglomerates uh, towards the outlet, since agglomerate rotation is induced by collisions and not only by the viscous interaction with the fluid. Now, I would like to show uh, or give a uh, better idea about this package behavior for this specific case. Here we see that agglomerates um, 
uh, in agglomerate. Now the agglomerates here are colored and sized based on the number of particles in the agglomerate. And here one see that the agglomeration process in action. So agglomerates just before they enter the, um, the main duct, uh, due to the harsh or let's say severe flow conditions in these regions, start to break almost fully. So they are reaching um, or uh, converting, uh, con they are converted to a very small fragments or fragments of a very small number of primary particles. It's also possible and important to uh, compare the contributions of the different uh, stress mechanisms. So um, here, um, uh, as can be seen, um, the drag stress here depicted or depicted in red is the most uh, dominant mechanism in all cases, in all powder and both Reynolds numbers, followed by the rotary stress in blue, where the uh, contribution of the turbulent stress is negligible. Lastly, for this test case, in the experimental uh, investigation by Weiler, the performance of the deagglomerator or the, you know, was um, quantified based on a single um, integral quantity denoted, denoted the dispersion rate, which is defined as the ratio of the volumetric median diameter achieved at the end of a commercial, high-end commercial disperser to the volumetric mean, median diameter achieved at the end or at the outlet of the uh, described funnel duct deagglomerator. And when we compare our numerical calculations here connected with uh, lines to the experimental uh, measurements here connected with uh, dashed lines, um, reasonable agreement can be uh, uh, here uh, concluded for all powders and both Reynolds number here below and red and high and blue and red. So the next test, uh, test case is the flow in a straight duct, straight square duct. The bulk velocity inside the um, duct is varied over a range of five values, leading to five different Reynolds number of 8,700 to 69,600. The simulations are again well resolved. The dynamics of the scale by Germano is applied, and the two-way coupling between the particles and the fluid flow is neglected. Uh, the investigated agglomerates are the same as those explained in the previous case. So again, we have three powders, and one, each agglomerate represents 100 primary particles. In this case, the gravity force is neglected, and the simulations are uh, organized in two sets. In the first set, solidly the wall impact bracket is model is activated, and the number of released agglomerates is 10 to the power 5 for all powders. Whereas in the second uh, simulation set, all relevant particle models, such as collisions, agglomeration, breakup by a fluid, and wall break and wall impacts, are simultaneously taken into account, and the volume fraction of particles in this set of simulation is set or fixed at uh, 10 to the power minus 5. And all simulations are carried out over a dimensionless time period of 100. So again, we start by inspecting the results of the fluid flow. In the background, we see the mean stream-wise velocity for the lowest and the highest Reynolds number. On the top, the stream, the stream lines of the secondary flows are uh, projected. Um, it can be concluded or somewhere, yeah, it can be said here that our results um, are consistent quantitatively and qualitatively with the theory and the previously reported literature on duct flows. One of the main objectives of this case was to compare the predictions of the traditional regression and the neural network-based wall impact breakage model. Here, focusing on the simulation of powder A at the lowest Reynolds number, the figures depict um, the fragmentation ratio and the size parameter of the largest fragment as functions of the dimensionless number P impact. The straight line here is the two-parameter regression model, and the scattered points are the predictions of the neural networks. The coloring here is based on the impact angle at the time of breakage. As it can be seen, the predictions of both models for high impact angles, so everything except green, are consistent or similar to each other. And when the impact angle decreases, namely when we talk about the um, shear impact case, um, the deviations become more clear. And the reason here that uh, the neural network is not able to reproduce the result it learned from the uh, reference the EM database more accurately. Um, now, comparing the results from the second set of simulation where all relevant particle relevant models are taken into account, um, it's here concluded that when the Reynolds number increases for the same powder, so from 1 to 3, or when the size of the primary particle increases from A to C, less agglomeration and higher breakage takes place, which leads to a higher or stronger reduction of the initial uh, of the, yeah, of the initial uh, mean diameter. In addition, comparing the uh, contribution of the different agglomeration mechanism, I reveal that at the lowest Reynolds number, the contribution of the wall impact is the most dominant one, followed by the rotary stress. 
when, uh, when the Reynolds number increases, for example, at Reynolds number, uh, number three, the license becomes the more effective and the contribution of the wall impact, uh, wall impact package becomes less important here and there. The third test case is the flow in pipe pins. Two pipe pin geometries are taken into account. The details again are available in the thesis, however, I will not be able to discuss this test case in detail due to the limited time. So to conclude, the um, agglomeration models have been developed for the oil and branch uh, simulation framework, including an improved description of the particle representing an agglomerate, a theoretical model for the fluid-induced breakup combined with a post breakup treatment and a time lag, and a data-driven model for the wall breakage taking important impact conditions into account. Um, uh, models have been used to uh, investigate the deagglomeration behavior in three different test cases, and in general it can be concluded that um, the proposed simulation methodology enables uh, uh, in important insights at uh, an affordable computational price. Lastly, this work has been published and presented in different journal articles and uh, conference contributions. Thank you so much. I'm happy to take your questions. Yes, thanks a uh, lot. Also, thanks to our young audience, which has been very, very quiet. And I'm, <laughs> I'm very much impressed. Uh, it's been three. <laughs> I'm impressed. But, uh, but so now I have to ask you uh, to. Uh, Leave the room so everybody will be some professor or every table member of the faculty. And then uh, you can come, we'll uh, give you a uh, talk. Mm -hmm.